Hey everybody, welcome back to Kitchen Tested, Scotty Approved, with me, Scotty, and my kitchen. Today, as you can see, we're not doing anything. Just kidding. Uh, today we're going to be making a homemade duck sauce from peach preserves or canned peaches, whatever you have in your house. The um, reason why we're doing this today is because I am doing a cooking class for my mother and her co-workers down in Georgia. Hello, y'all. Um, we're doing some Asian-inspired dishes, so I figured we'd get ahead and kind of do some homemade things. If people want to do some homemade stuff, this is a good recipe to use. So today we're going to make a homemade duck sauce, and then we're going to do a second video and do some homemade scallion pancakes, which are also really, really good. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. We're going to get this duck sauce up and running. Everything's behind me. Come on, let's start cooking. Okay, so we have everything in front of us here. Well, mostly everything, and we'll, I'll kind of pull some things off to the side as we go. So this is basically everything that we need. Um, the recipe I sent out to everybody else, but I'll speak slowly so everybody can, can hear me and uh, we can figure out what things are. So this is 15 ounces-ish, maybe a little less than, like around 16, of pureed peaches. Uh, these are canned peaches with some like natural sugar uh, and a little bit of water. That's really about it. So 15 ounces um, by measure, not by weight pureed, okay? Uh, this is two garlic cloves that are minced and a, about an inch worth of ginger um, nub that is also minced up, okay? A half a cup of liquid, water, apple cider, orange juice, whatever's really gonna affect the flavors of your duck sauce, that's what's important. So I'm using orange juice today. Uh, in the recipe, I call for six to eight tablespoons of sugar, depending on how sweet your peaches are. So this batch was made a little bit on the not, not so pe on a sweet side, so I added seven tablespoons of sugar, which should be good to go. I have two teaspoons of plain old gelatin right here. That's all we need. No flavor, no nothing. And then two cups of, I'm sorry, I apologize. These are two four ounce containers, which equal one cup of applesauce. These do have a little bit of cinnamon in them. It's totally okay. The flavors work really, really, really well. Uh, off to the side, which you really can't see, but I'll bring in a minute, but we have, we're gonna measure out six ounces of rice wine vinegar, and then a half a cup of each of the next three. Soy sauce, honey, and sweet chili sauce. It seems like a lot of things. It's, you may not have all these things in your home, not a big deal. Some things you can skip without a problem. Like you don't necessarily need to add the honey, you could add more sugar. You don't necessarily need to add a sweet chili sauce. You can add more sugar, maybe some chili flake if you have some. I've got a nice thick bottom pot right here. This is enamel, this works really nicely. Uh, I probably wouldn't use aluminum or anything like that. The, the possibility of the, all the acid going on and the, the way it might react with the pan may not make it for a very nice sauce. I've got a rubber spatula and I've got a whisk. That's really all the, all the, the tools I'm really gonna need. So my pan's getting warm. I'm gonna take my peaches and I'm just gonna dump them right on in. Already starting to sizzle and sear, it's great. We're gonna, gonna scrape all the little bits out. Because every little bit counts, right? And great, so this is already starting to simmer, which is, which is perfect, because we're looking for. We're not looking to let this boil. We don't want it to get any color. We just wanna get kinda hot. Our ginger and our garlic. Now these are raw. Except for my garlic, you can use chopped raw garlic. I like to use preserved garlic. It's what I use when I, when I cook in home. If you've watched any of my other videos, I like to take lots of raw, fresh garlic and grind it with salt and then cover with olive oil. It makes it nice and fragrant and kind of ferments it a little bit. And I think it brings out more flavor for the garlic. It also lasts like that for an extremely long time. So I just added my ginger and my garlic. I'm just gonna stir it up. And we're gonna add our half a cup of liquid of your choosing. I'm using orange juice. I'm gonna save my container because I'm gonna use it to measure my rice wine vinegar. And now I've got my seven tablespoons of sugar as well. Seems like a lot, but you know what? It's worth it. I'm just gonna stir everything up. And we're basically gonna let this come up to a simmer. So we can add our gelatin. This whole project doesn't take very long whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's the, the longest thing it's gonna take for you is getting everything mise en place out, like getting all your ingredients ready, like I have right here, like all just ready to dump and kind of go. That, that took me the longest amount of time, like 15 minutes, you know? But once you get the pot on, everything starts cooking, we're gonna be done. The, the, honestly, the thing it takes the longest is the chill time. It does need to relax. It needs to chill overnight, or at least for a couple of hours before you use it for the gelatin to really set and make like a nice thicker sauce. If you don't have gelatin, then don't use it. You're just gonna have a, a much thinner sauce. Maybe back off on the amount of liquid going into it. 
to help maintain a thicker consistency, but the flavor is going to be there no matter what. So it might be like a thinner style duck sauce. Or if you don't want to make duck sauce, we all have a junk drawer so full of duck sauce, chopsticks, and soy. I know we all do. I know I do. I have too many. Um, so that's always a good substitute as well. So around the outside, we're starting to see some bubbles, which is great. So it's just starting to simmer. And if you notice, like I'm, I've kind of left mine, I don't know if you can see what my dial I'm on right now, but I'm on like medium high heat. So I don't want this screaming boiling, but I kind of want it to get up to a nice rapid simmer. All right, so I'm starting to get a nice hard simmer, almost a rough boil. I'm gonna take my gelatin and I'm gonna lightly sprinkle it over the top, kind of separate it. You might get some chunks of the gelatin, that's okay, it will dissolve. Two teaspoons. We're gonna sit here and whisk it until most of those big boys are gone. All those big chunks are out of there. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit so it's a nice soft simmer. Looks great to me. I got a couple of chunks of gelatin, but they will they'll dissolve because I've still got things to add. So now we add the rest. So I'm gonna add my two four ounce cups of applesauce. Sweetened, unsweetened, cinnamon, no cinnamon. It's up to you. Just make sure you are adjusting your sugar content accordingly. Great. Give that a little mix. Awesome. Now we're gonna add the rest. See, pretty simple. All right, we're gonna do six ounces of rice wine vinegar, which is just a hair over a half a cup. Take this little stopper off. Six ounces. Now, mind you, this is a kind of a big recipe. This will make a quart, but I mean, once you start eating this stuff, it's hard not to stop, or it's hard to stop, excuse me. All right, now we're gonna do a quarter cup of soy sauce. That's why I keep the one cup, better than dirtying other things. Quarter cup of soy. Quarter cup of sweet chili, which might actually end up killing this bottle. I love this stuff, oh, almost. Great, let's save some. And then last but not least, the honey, which is again, also an optional item. I like the viscosity that honey gives. I'm sorry, my hat keeps tapping the camera, I apologize. Um, I like the viscos viscosity that it gives and the flavor that it gives for stuff like this. So I'm actually gonna use a different cup though because my dry measuring cup works better for honey because I can get every little drop out. And I can, it's collapsible, I love it. Perfect. Awesome, and then just flip it over, bang, pops right out, love it. That, my friends, is mostly it. I'm gonna hang out on my spatula just in case. I'm gonna whisk everything in, yeah, ice color. Great. You're gonna see it too when it sets up. I have some made already, so I will, I'm gonna show a side by side here in a second when we go back to the table. Awesome. Sweet chili bits in there, looks great. We're gonna let this come right back up to a simmer. It's gonna cook for about five to 10 minutes just to make sure all the flavors are really well melted. Cool, all right, check these out, ready? So this is the one we just made, right? Nice and loose. Doesn't look like duck sauce. I mean, you could serve it just like this. It's like a loose duck sauce. This is the same sauce that sat for a couple of hours. Huge difference in consistency. So if you want something in this thickness, stick with the recipe of the two teaspoons of gelatin. If you want something a little bit thinner or something closer to this, maybe not do any, or maybe do a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon. You kind of play with it from there. But I like mine a little bit thicker, which is how I like my duck sauce. And that's it. We're done. Duck sauce is made. We got a little over a quart. It's still kind of hot, so we're gonna put it in the fridge. You could can this if you want to. Obviously not this much, but I'd probably break it down into smaller jars. But it'll last for a long time if it's canned in the fridge, at least up to a month, if not longer. I mean, it's mostly shelf stable items in there. Really, like you don't really have much of a chance of things going bad on you. Um, 
That's great. So it's, you guys learn how to make duck sauce. And for those of you who are joining me for class on Thursday, hopefully you'll make this. If not, no big deal. Pull some packets out of the drawer and we'll enjoy ourselves anyway. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Have a good one and keep on cooking. Thanks.